friends, in today's video I want to tell you about some of my favorite TikTok accounts that are not book related. Some of you guys know I have been getting into TikTok lately. I have this video about how to get started on BookTok if that is something of interest to you, but not all of the accounts that I follow are book related and I have found some amazing content creators who I really enjoy and I thought I would share them with all of you. And if any of you know how the TikTok algorithm works, they feed you accounts that they think you will enjoy. So I'm going to preface this by saying that most of my personal favorites are nerdy, feminist, queer, intersectional in some way. If that sounds appealing to you, stick around and maybe you'll find some cool new accounts to follow. If that is not up your alley, then this video will probably just make you angry, so it's not going to be the one for you. With that said, I'm going to briefly introduce each of these accounts and then show you one or two of my favorite TikTok videos that they've made that I think give you a decent idea of the sort of content they create. All of these creators will be linked in the video description down below if you want to follow them. Okay, first let's start with some of my favorite nerdy creators. One that I discovered actually through a Twitter thread and I am obsessed is the Black Country Living Museum. This is a living museum, which means there are people who dress in clothes of the time and it's in somewhere in the rural UK. I don't honestly know, but their TikTok videos are so good. They're funny, they're informative. I, I really love this TikTok account. Here are a couple of great examples. Another nerdy account that I really enjoy is Straw Hat Goofy. This guy does stuff mostly on movies. He does a lot of stuff on Marvel and DC, a lot of movie news, movie reviews, music from movies, just a lot of really interesting things. I really like the MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and I always learn something interesting from watching his account. Here's an example. So let's talk about Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness really quick. So reportedly the cast and crew got this tie-in comic as a thank you from Marvel Studios for working on Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Now obviously we have Doctor Strange, Wanda, Wong, people we knew who were going to be in the movie, but I want to talk about this character on the right. This is America Chavez aka Miss America who's been confirmed to be in Doctor Strange 2. And for some reason we really haven't been talking about this character. See America Chavez in the comics is part of the Young Avengers team. Not only that, but she's a fan favorite character who's a big source for representation being queer and Afro-Latina. Her being in Doctor Strange 2 makes sense because one of her main superpowers is universe hopping. She can open up a portal and travel to different universes and time at will. She also has super strength and can fly, but that pales in comparison to universe hopping. With that power alone, it looks like she's going to be a main character in this movie. But here's where I'm conflicted. It seems America Chavez is being played by Sochi Gomez in the movie. I've already said that America Chavez is Afro-Latina. She's every bit as part of the Afro-Latin community as Miles Morales. So why didn't Marvel cast an Afro-Latina, but make her Afro-Latina in the tie-in? Would they do that to Miles? I'm not sure which of them I found first, but around the same time I found Straw Hat Goofy, I also found Jay Stubes, and they actually do a podcast together. She's great. She also talks a lot about movies. She talks about comics, and she does a lot of it from a feminist perspective. She's also a mom. She's bisexual. She's great. Thor's journey in Thor Ragnarok is so amazing because it illustrates exactly how useless, outdated masculine stereotypes are and how much more we can accomplish when we embrace tender masculinity. Up until this point, Thor literally clung to a physical embodiment of everything that made him worthy. And surprise, it was a weapon. And so this heavily symbolic weapon that his father gave him became Thor's only means of coping with his problems. Because nothing says I love you like a gift that will constantly judge whether you're a good enough person. Thanks, dad. 
But because of this, Thor has an obsession with maintaining his worthiness. That's why he's so fixated on being the strongest Avenger. But what's so great about Ragnarok is that it puts him in a series of situations where his strength does not matter at all. Because no matter how strong you are, there will always be situations that you're incapable of punching your way out of. And learning to accept your weaknesses and understand when you need help and ask for it is one of the strongest things you can do. Which is why Thor actually accepting his insecurities is such a huge step. His acceptance that he's not strong enough to beat Hela and prioritizing saving his people is Thor's greatest accomplishment and makes him the king that Odin could never be. The next category of TikTok accounts I follow, I guess I would call activist accounts, where most of the content they create is about activism in some way. There is some crossover here because I also follow some more comedy accounts that do activism through comedy, uh, but these two accounts I would say are more strictly activist, not strictly, but primarily activist. The first one is Herspective. This is created by Evelyn, who is a radical intersectional feminist. She has a lot of really smart, insightful things to say. She also talks about something that I think doesn't get brought up very frequently when we talk about feminism, which is, I think, really important, is that radical intersectional feminism also empowers men and frees them from toxic masculinity, which is also really important if there are men in your life that you care about and love. And I, I just, I like her approach to things and she does not take shit from anybody, which I also appreciate. I always get something out of watching her TikTok videos. This is your daily reminder that white supremacy is stronger than patriarchy. Throughout history and even now, we have repeatedly seen that when it is between maleness and whiteness, whiteness wins. Think of Emmett Till, Scottsboro Boys, more recently, Central Park jogging case, Texas Perkins case, and Amy Cooper. Feminism that is not radical and intersectional does not address this dynamic between white supremacy and patriarchy. White liberal feminism will only address one systemic oppression done against women without addressing any other forms of oppression. That's why feminism has to be radical and intersectional. And also that's why feminism has a space for men, particularly black men. Because feminism is about protecting the oppressed groups, understanding their systemic oppression, to ultimately end all types of oppression. Enabling white women to commit to the continuation of modern day Emmett Till is not feminism. Anti-racism is central to feminism. Remember, black men are our brothers. Structural oppression is upheld by two things, interpersonal oppression and internalized oppression. And internalized oppression upholds interpersonal oppression. So if you are a person with one or more marginalized identities who's committed to dismantling any type of structural oppression, your commitment needs to be grounded in inner work. Because how you treat yourself, how to talk to yourself, and how you see yourself are all part of what is holding up the structural oppression. So if you have internalized voices of your oppressors, and that is a standard by which you're trying to measure yourself, also that's how you regulate yourself, those are adding to the structural oppression. So for example, if you hear a joke and it's not funny to you and it doesn't feel right to you, then it is not right to you. The voice that enters right after that feeling of something not being right to you, that tries to rationalize away the harm, like, oh, but he didn't mean it, like, oh, but he's well-intentioned, is the internalized oppression dedicated to keeping you away from speaking up and being part of the change. That's why honoring yourself is critical to dismantling structural oppression. Another more activist account I follow is Notorious Cree. He is an indigenous creator who does some educational content, but a lot of more activist indigenous content. He also does some comedic stuff, some cool dance things. I always just really enjoy whatever content he creates. And, you know, sometimes you learn some things of like, what not to do? What does cultural appropriation look like? What are inappropriate questions to ask or ways of interacting with indigenous people that you don't really know? Uh, all of that, I think, is on his account and I've enjoyed it. Next, let's talk about comedy. And again, I think a lot of the comedy I tend to enjoy is also more like pointed comedy, <laughs> talking about issues I care about. I, I mean, this is really giving you insight into what the algorithm is serving to me and doing a great job of. But one of my favorite comedic accounts is Kevin James Thornton. He is hilarious. He's this middle-aged gay guy who does these 
funny stories using autotune and then we'll also do skits and I just really love his account here are two of my favorite videos from him I really needed a job and there was an ad in the paper that said would you like a fun exciting career and I thought Yes, so I went to the interview and it turns out it was a job to teach ballroom dancing and I thought shouldn't that have been in the ad and they were like no we'll teach you how to do it so every day for a month I went in and they taught me how to ballroom dance and I really sucked but then they were like you're ready to teach so then I found out the lessons were fifteen hundred dollars and I thought shouldn't these people know that I don't know what I'm doing and they said no they're really here for an emotional experience and I thought are they and then they taught us to pressure people with this imaginary scenario where they were at a party and they needed to know how to foxtrot and it was humiliating and I thought that's never happened before you're my friend oh great I just don't agree with your lifestyle choices. Oh, because I'm gay? It's just my personal belief. I mean, it's kind of part of the package. It's who I am. And I'll definitely vote for people who'll make sure that you could be denied health care or fired from your job because of your lifestyle choices. It sounds like you're not my friend. It's just my sincere personal belief. Okay, well, I don't like your sincere personal belief. You people are so full of hate and intolerance. You say you want acceptance, but you don't accept my belief and my God-given right to make sure that your life is a living hell. Another account I love, and this one definitely I would say also crosses over into the activist side of things, is Chelsea Hart is Me. She does comedy that is feminist and activist, and I, I just get a kick out of her videos. She is a very strong flavor, but I find her really entertaining and I love her videos. She's also really quick to address topical issues in the news as they come up, whether it's what's going on in the Middle East or whether it's Black Lives Matter things. And I just really appreciate her. She is kind of like unabashedly progressive and intersectional and uh, I, I love the videos that she does. Here are a couple of my favorites from her. So the other day, a man told me I was hot. Yes, thank you, I told him. He did not like this. No need to be stuck up, he says to me. But I agreed with you. I thought you'd be happy we came to a consensus. Did I suddenly become less hot because I affirmed that you were in fact correct? Just admit it. You didn't want to give me a compliment. You wanted me to be thankful for a compliment. And that's some disingenuous shit I can't get down with. Would you like a cookie for pointing out the obvious? The sky is blue. Women aren't tricky. Just be less gross. <laughs> so the other day a man told me I look trans. Good, I told him. He did not like this. You look like a man, he says to me. What if I told you I bought men's clothes on purpose? Because I like them. It's not my fault I look better in these clothes than you do. You want to know a fun fact? The word trans isn't an insult because being trans is not bad. And being trans is not new. Queers are written about in the Vedas 3,000 years ago. In Sanskrit itself, mother of all languages. Do you know what's not in the Vedas? You're bullshit. In 3,000 years, nobody found time to care about that. Be mad. <laughs> And then another account that I just adore is Mason Denver. They are a non-binary comedy account that does skits and they're hilarious. So I'm going to show you two of my favorite videos from them. One of them is playing this character they created who's a receptionist for hell. And I just think these skits are amazing and hilarious. And then the other one is these sort of like therapist self-talk funny Skits that they do. So here are two of my favorites from Mason. Oh, hi, welcome to hell. What's your name? Um, it says right here you're not supposed to be here, Zul. Well. You think you are supposed to be here. Why is that? Your pastor told you that you were going to hell. Oh, and what's his name? Okay, and just make a note in his file and let me make a call. 
Wales and isn't my favorite demon. Gladys, how are you, honey? I tell you, I've been having a while sticking right into my bra map, for the grand eye. I've got a lost soul down here, LGBTQ. Oh, bless their heart. They must be shaking like a wee leaf. Could you get them to the correct afterlife for me? It would be my pleasure, my lovely. Thank you, doll. Hey, are we still down for cards and margaritas this weekend? Oh, you know I am. Excellent. I'll talk to you later, doll. All right, honey bun, I've got it all sorted out. I'm gonna take that escalator up to the Department of Lost Souls, and my good girlfriend Gladys is gonna take excellent care of you, okay? Repeat after me. Okay, setting a boundary. Setting a boundary is an act, is an act of self-love, of a selfish monster. Why? Because, explain, because. Let's try again. Okay, I will love myself. I will love myself because I am enough. If I earn it. Who did this to you? Who didn't? The last three don't necessarily fit these categories, but I think you'll see how they also connect with things that I find interesting. I've been following Ashley Graham on TikTok. I really enjoy what she puts out. I think she's funny and body positive, and I just appreciate that. Here's an example of a TikTok video she did. Do you want to be a model? First, we need to find our light. Try a window. Or a ring light, if you're feeling fancy. But you can always do it outside. Now you need to find your angle. I love a low one and the rest is up to you. Lots of movement. Dance. Don't be afraid to show every angle. The camera's here, the camera's there, the camera's there. All right, I think we got it. Another person I follow is Abraham Piper. So I originally heard about his account through a New York Times article that was talking about him because he is the son of John Piper, who's well known in uh, like evangelical Christian circles. I'm a former evangelical. Now I'm like a progressive Christian. But uh, Abraham Piper is interesting because his father is a pretty prominent theologian, like evangelical theologian, whereas he has entirely left Christianity and is now an atheist. And some of the content he creates on TikTok, not all of it, but occasionally some of the videos are kind of lightheartedly poking fun at evangelical Christianity. So this is how I originally found him is through this New York Times article that mentioned this. And as somebody who's still in the process of like deconstructing my experiences in evangelical Christianity, I found that really interesting. But I've ended up just really enjoying him and his personality. He's got this really dry sense of humor and is always really cheerful about things and has like interesting philosophical ideas. And you know, I don't always agree with everything he says, but I enjoy him, so I've been following his account. Here is an example of a recent video he put up. I bet my wife thinks that guy's pretty hot. Is the thought that popped into my head last night as I was watching TV and the main character biked across the screen. But then I had an immediate realization. I was the only person involved in making that observation. It was all in my head. Which means that the idea that this guy was hot was my idea. Had nothing to do with my wife. And then in my mind, without even meaning to, I projected it onto her. Probably because of some deeply entrenched and likely toxic sense of how I'm supposed to think and feel as a straight person. I don't know. Anyway, later I asked my wife, do you think this guy's good looking? And she was like, he's not ugly. He got cast in a starring role, so yeah, I guess. I don't know. So I guess the point of this little story is that my wife and I have different tastes in men. The final account that I want to mention is great if you are a parent or interested in becoming a parent. I follow this account, The Indomitable Black Man, and this guy is really interesting. He's not actually a parent, but he's, there's, there's a word for it, I'm forgetting, but he basically works with special needs kids or kids with behavioral issues to help their families do better and help them cope. So he's trained in that work and that's what he does professionally. And he does all of these great TikTok videos about parents parenting. He'll give advice. One thing that apparently was pretty controversial is he's done some videos talking about studies showing really negative long-term effects of spanking, talking about better ways of parenting, better ways of teaching your kids what they should or shouldn't be doing, better ways of managing acting out and behavior. And I just really appreciate the work that he's doing. I think it's so valuable and wonderful. Um, and I've gotten some really useful tips from watching his TikTok account that I've put into practice and it's been great. Okay, this is a great question. I actually have a kid that does this every time I ask him to do certain tasks. One of the first things you want to do, most important, ignore it. 
Kids aren't a threat. Don't take it personally. Let them call you a name for that moment, right? Then you want to offer incentive. Hey, when you get done with this, then you can do this. So say for instance, you're asking them to take out the trash and they're in the middle of the game. You say, all right, pause your game. When you're done taking out the trash, you can play your game. Or even better, you can't play your game until you do what I ask you to do. This puts in the mindset of prioritization. Now, when they're done, then you need to address it. Hey, how you handled this situation? How do you think that that made me feel? If I were to call you this, how would you feel? So what can we do next time to make sure that we're not saying something like this to hurt somebody's feeling? Communicate after they've calmed down. Those are 11 of my personal favorites that are non-bookish. If people are interested, I could do this at some point, talking about some of my favorite bookish TikTok accounts. But I really love all of these. I hope you guys will go check them out if they seem of interest. They are all, again, linked down below. Talk to me in the comments down below. And for your question of the day, tell me about one of your favorite TikTok accounts to follow if you're on TikTok. If you're on TikTok and you have one that you want to talk about, let me know in the comments down below. If you guys like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.